Hey guys, welcome to the Marissa Ng official channel where we help businesses to grow. So today's topic is going to be about productivity, yeah? And uh, how do we increase productivity? That's today's question. So let's take an example. We have a $1 million business, yeah, uh, that makes $1 million in revenue, but requires um, $200,000 in manpower cost, and probably the, uh, another similar business at also $1 million in annual revenue, needs to have $400,000 of manpower cost to be able to make that same $1 million. So if you really look at that, the business that uses and requires less manpower cost uh, has been able to achieve more results at a lower cost, and that is called productivity, all right? So let's get into it. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about how you recognize uh, if your business is low in productivity. How do you start seeing some signs and signals and indication that this is happening to your company, okay? So we're gonna get into it. Uh, but guys, before we go in, uh, and if you're new to this channel, please hit subscribe on uh, the subscribe button or, and those of you who really wanna be able to get us informing you when a new video is ready, uh, please tick on the bell, yeah? Just hit the bell and every time a new video comes up, you will not be losing out, all right? And so let's get into it. How do we recognize if um, our business is low in productivity, okay? I've got a few tips for you. Number one, you start seeing a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes, a lot of times when you've got a firefight, yeah? And uh, unnecessary errors, miscommunication among your team, with your clients, with your suppliers. You start seeing a lot of firefighting, that is also one of the indications of low productivity, all right? And of course, in my next video, I'm gonna share with you how you handle this, okay? So that's number one. Number two, low profitability. Now, of course, low profitability has, is very much correlated with productivity, yeah? But when you notice low profitability, try and take um, your manpower cost as a ratio to revenue. So then you get to see, let's take the example earlier of a company that would have $200,000 in cost to make a million dollars versus a company that requires $400,000 in cost, a manpower cost to be able to make that same $1 million. One is 20% and the other is 40%, right? So what you wanna do is that you wanna start looking at some of the industry ratios, benchmark to yourself, yeah? Uh, benchmark yourself so that you can see, start asking your peers, you know, how much it is, you know, and sometimes they share differently enough, but if you're in the service industry, yeah, and because I've seen a lot of different P&Ls, I've seen a lot of different cash flow statements as a banker, uh, we'd often be uh, we'd often be evaluating the health of the business. And if you're in the service industry, you want to try to get it anywhere between say 20 or 30 percent. If it's too low, it's also not good. That means people are overworked. But if it is too high, then productivity is a question mark to see if you are actually um, uh, getting the most. Uh, revenue and income and result out of the same team. And if you're in manufacturing, for instance, it go anywhere as high to probably 25 to 35%, yeah? of your revenue would be manpower cost. So it's something that you've got to be able to benchmark uh, depending on which industry you're in. Uh, this is not a hard and fast rule, guys, but do start looking into that to see where your profitability is going and how much it is taking your business to generate that same amount of revenue. Number three, how do you also start to recognize uh, poor productivity or customer complaints, um, customer feedback? Uh, or the nature of the feedback is very, very important. The nature, um, if uh, the product is not fast enough, I made a complaint um, and only somebody only came back to me after six days, you know? And if that turnaround is not fast enough or product uh, from your establishment, your premise, to the customer's place or the office, wherever, yeah? Uh, and that turnaround is too slow. Again, start assessing the nature of the customer feedback to see if there's a poor productivity that's happening within the business. And number four, this is probably something that you can do right away today if it is a weekday that you're watching this video. Uh, number four is to start noticing employees that are over, they're working later and later hours. You know, if you're working later and later hours, uh, it could possibly be uh, that employee is uh, not, not so capable, yeah? Uh, needs more competency in getting the job done. That's possible, so he or she is just staying later hours. But it is also possible that 
that employee or a small handful of employees that are staying late they are pulling the weight of the people that are not doing their work not doing the work that they're supposed to do so then they are kind of like doing the late hours because they just want to get the job done while the rest are probably not doing their work as proper as they should so then the company is kind of leaning to that that per small percentage of people that are overworking so that's something that you have to look at as well because in a long run when you have employees that are overworked productivity is going to drop mistakes are going to happen and then it comes back to a lot of complaints firefighting chaos and some of the other indications that i mentioned earlier okay of course guys uh today's video is about us uh, identifying if we are suffering from a lack of productivity of course those are some of the indications some of the telltale signs that you can start looking out for and if any of you facing it please catch my next video where i teach you how to increase productivity so again remember to have a great business and a great life because being in business is about more life take care and i'll see you next week